Today we embark on a journey back in time, revisiting the critical moments that led to Japan's surrender during World War II. In this first segment, we'll explore the events that set the stage for the dramatic conclusion of the war, focusing on the Yalta Conference and the Battle of Okinawa. The Yalta Conference. Our story begins at the Yalta Conference, a historic meeting that took place in February 1945. World leaders, including Joseph Stalin, Franklin D. Roosevelt, and Winston Churchill, gathered to discuss the post-war landscape and devise strategies against Japan. It was during this conference that Stalin committed to launching an attack on Japan within a few months after the Nazis' surrender, solidifying his verbal promise made in 1943 at the Tehran Conference. The Battle of Okinawa. As we continue, we turn our attention to the Battle of Okinawa, a pivotal conflict that unfolded between April and July of 1945. This battle proved to be one of the most brutal and devastating encounters of the Pacific Theater. Approximately 7,000 Japanese soldiers surrendered, while many others chose a tragic fate, believing that the Americans would not take prisoners. The battle left an indelible mark on Japan, shattering the confidence of the Japanese leadership and its citizens. Internal struggle and Soviet influence. With the stage set by the Yalta Conference and the Battle of Okinawa, Japan found itself at a crossroads. Internally, the Japanese government faced profound divisions and dilemmas as it grappled with the idea of surrender. Within Japan's leadership, there was a clear divide. On one side, we had the group representing the Emperor Hirohito and the Supreme Council for the direction of the war. On the other, a faction of military leaders and government officials who remained committed to continuing the fight at all costs. The Supreme Council for the Direction of the War, which included influential figures like Prime Minister Kantaro Suzuki and Prince Takamatsu, held significant power. They could decide whether the war should end peacefully or not, albeit with the Emperor having the ultimate authority to make the final decision. In the months of June and well into July 1945, their determination to continue the fight was rooted in the belief that Japan must defend the Empire at all costs. This internal struggle within Japan's leadership torn between a peaceful resolution and a relentless pursuit of victory, played a critical role in shaping the nation's destiny. However, another significant factor weighed heavily on Japan's decision-making process, the influence of the Soviet Union. Stalin's actions and his declaration of war against Japan in August 1945 had a profound impact. At the time of the Potsdam Declaration, Japan still hoped for Soviet intervention to broker a negotiated surrender. The Japanese Minister of Foreign Affairs even conveyed their intent to seek Moscow's assistance for a negotiated end to the war. This communication hinted at a desire to avoid an unconditional surrender. Stalin, on the other hand, viewed Japan's request not as an opportunity for peace, but as a chance to expand Soviet territory in Asia. He was less enthusiastic about working with the Allies and was keen on securing the territorial gains promised at Yalta. The Soviet Union's entry into the war against Japan further complicated the situation. On August 8, 1945, Soviet forces launched a massive invasion of Manchuria and the Japanese-occupied territories. This swift and overwhelming attack shattered Japanese defenses, taking tens of thousands of Japanese soldiers as prisoners of war. The proximity of Soviet forces to Japan's homeland and their capture of key positions in the region added a new layer of urgency to Japan's decision-making process. The Soviet Union's actions played a pivotal role in pushing Japan closer to the brink of surrender. In the midst of these internal divisions and external pressures, Japan found itself facing an unprecedented choice to continue the fight or seek an end to the war. The influence of both internal discord and the actions of the Soviet Union would significantly impact Japan's ultimate decision. The internal struggle and the weight of Soviet influence were two critical elements that shaped the path to Japan's surrender. As we delve deeper into this historical narrative, we gain a clearer understanding of the intricate web of factors that brought about the end of World War II in the Pacific. The surrender, end of the war and its aftermath. As we delve deeper into the final act of this historical drama, we arrive at the momentous decision that marked the end of World War II in the Pacific. The surrender of Japan. Amidst internal divisions and mounting external pressures, Japan's leadership had reached a pivotal juncture by the summer of 1945. The Emperor, Hirohito, played a central role in the unfolding events. His intervention was instrumental in steering Japan towards a path of surrender. The Emperor's involvement in political matters was unconventional for a constitutional monarch. But the gravity of the situation compelled him to take a proactive role. In meetings with the Supreme Council for the direction of the war, 
Emperor Hirohito expressed his deep concerns about the devastating consequences of continuing the conflict. He stressed the need to avoid further bloodshed and destruction. On July 26, 1945, the Potsdam Declaration was issued by the United States, the United Kingdom and China, calling for Japan's unconditional surrender. Japan's response to this declaration would be a critical turning point. Initially, Japan's leadership was divided on how to respond. While some advocated for continued resistance, others recognized the dire circumstances and the need for a peaceful resolution. It was Emperor Hirohito who played the decisive role. In a historic meeting on August 9, 1945, he expressed his desire for Japan to accept the terms of the Potsdam Declaration. This momentous decision was met with reluctance by some within the government, but ultimately, it set the wheels in motion for Japan's surrender. On August 10, 1945, Japan communicated its acceptance of the Potsdam terms, with the condition that the power of the emperor would remain intact. This response marked a significant step towards ending the war. However, the road to surrender was not without its challenges. On the night of August 14, 1945, a group of Japanese military officers led by Major Kenji Hatanaka attempted a coup d'etat to prevent the emperor's broadcast of surrender. They occupied the imperial palace and seized key government buildings. This desperate act of resistance ultimately failed, and by the dawn of August 15, Japan's surrender was secured. It was on August 15, 1945, that Emperor Hirohito made a historic radio broadcast known as the Gyokuan Hoso, announcing Japan's acceptance of the Potsdam Declaration and the country's surrender. This day, now known as Victory Over Japan Day, VJ Day, marked the formal end of World War II. The surrender had far-reaching consequences. Japan was occupied by Allied forces led by the United States until 1952, when the Treaty of San Francisco was signed. This treaty officially ended the occupation, and Japan emerged as a democratic nation and a key ally of the United States during the Cold War. The decision to surrender was a momentous one. Shaped by internal divisions, the influence of the Soviet Union, and the leadership of Emperor Hirohito, it marked the end of a brutal conflict that had engulfed the world and left a lasting impact on Japan and the international stage. As we reflect on the events that led to Japan's surrender, we gain insight into the complex and multifaceted factors that played a role in shaping the course of history. The aftermath of World War II would bring about a new era for Japan and the world. Legacy and Reflection As we conclude our journey through the history of Japan's surrender in World War II, it's essential to reflect on the legacy of these pivotal events and their enduring impact on the world. The surrender of Japan marked not only the end of World War II, but also the beginning of a new era for Japan and the international community. The decision to accept the terms of the Potsdam Declaration and end the conflict had far-reaching consequences. One of the immediate consequences was the occupation of Japan by Allied forces, predominantly led by the United States. This occupation aimed at demilitarizing and democratizing Japan. General Douglas MacArthur played a crucial role in overseeing the reforms that reshaped Japanese society and politics. Under MacArthur's guidance, Japan underwent significant political, economic, and social transformations. The new constitution, adopted in 1947, renounced the right to wage war and laid the foundation for a democratic system of government. Women were granted the right to vote, and labor unions became a driving force in the post-war Japanese economy. Japan's post-war recovery and economic resurgence became known as the Japanese economic miracle. The nation that had been devastated by war emerged as an economic powerhouse with rapid industrialization and technological advancement. The legacy of Japan's surrender also extends to its relationship with the United States. Japan became a staunch ally of the U.S. during the Cold War, hosting American military bases and contributing to regional stability. The U.S.-Japan alliance remains a cornerstone of security and diplomacy in the Asia-Pacific region to this day. Reflecting on the events that led to Japan's surrender, it's clear that a combination of factors, internal divisions, external pressures, and the leadership of Emperor Hirohito shaped the course of history. The decision to end the war brought about a dramatic shift in Japan's trajectory, from imperial aggression to a democratic and pacifist nation. In closing, the story of Japan's surrender reminds us of the complex and often tragic nature of war. It underscores the importance of diplomacy, dialogue, and the pursuit of peace in the face of conflict. The legacy of these events serves as a powerful reminder of the resilience of nations and the capacity for positive change, even in the darkest of times. As we look back on this chapter in history, we honor the memory of those who endured the hardships of World War II 
and strive to ensure that the lessons learned from that era guide us towards a more peaceful and prosperous future. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the remarkable history of Japan's surrender in World War II.